The most popular video describes how to make a shelter with a tarp. In that video, I recommend using a long guy line so that, quote, the tension on the line is more horizontal than vertical. Otherwise, the tent peg you use to secure the guy line will tend to slide out of the ground, unquote. The guy line I use is so long it extends beyond the edge of the video. Looking back, I realize that I didn't justify my claim that a long guy line is better. Also, the more I looked at how-to videos for tents and tarp shelters, the more I realized how many videos assume that backpackers know how to place a tent stake. You'll even find some bad advice on the subject. If your tent or shelter keeps collapsing because the tent stakes pull out, this video is for you. I want to explain why some approaches work better than others. Knowing a bit of theory will help you make better decisions in the real world. In this drawing, you see a green tarp shelter with a guy line leading to a wire stake in the ground. In my drawings, the stake is larger than life, so you can see what's going on. Also, I'll assume that the soil at your campsite is firm, so a wire stake will do. I'll show the upper part of the stake is sticking out of the ground, again, so you can see what's happening. In practice, you need to set the stake flush with the ground. That minimizes the leverage as the guy line pulls on the stake. Notice how the tent stake is vertical. That's an intuitive thing to do, and for wedding tents it's the correct thing to do, but it's not the right approach for a backpacker's wire stakes. Here's why. A taut guy line exerts a constant pull on the top of the tent peg. When gusts of wind hit the shelter, that adds repeated tugs that help loosen the tent peg, making it more likely to slide out of the ground. The constant pull and the tugs are all in one direction, namely, the direction of the guy line. Here's where just a bit of physics makes a big difference. Using vectors, you can break down the pull along the guy line into two forces, one parallel to the tent stake and the other at right angles to the tent stake. In part, this drawing tells you that the guy line is trying to pull the tent stake sideways through the dirt towards the shelter, which isn't going to happen. However, the guy line is also trying to pull the stake straight up once a few wind gusts loosen the tent stake, the upper component of the guy line pull can slide your tent stake out of the ground. A steady pull will accomplish the same result right away if the pull is strong enough. You can see that happening at the start of the video. Most hikers quickly learn to angle the stake toward the shelter. They may do it to help the guy line stay on the stake, but it also helps prevent the tent stake from sliding out of the ground. Compared to the previous picture, in this picture, most of the pull by the guy line is at right angles to the stake. Less of that pull is parallel to the stake. In other words, the guy line is not trying as hard to slide the stake out of the ground, even though it's pulling just as hard as before. There is, in fact, an optimum angle between the guy line and the stake. That angle is 90 degrees. The same rule applies if you're pegging the edge of a tarp directly to the ground. Insert the tent peg at a 90 degree angle to the tarp. But back to this drawing. There's no point in adding a vector diagram because all of the guy line pull is at a right angle to the stake and none of the pull is parallel to the stake. In other words, the guy line isn't trying to slide the stake out of the ground no matter how much it pulls. But don't just take my word for it. Let's try to understand why. If a guy line is pulling on a stake and the stake isn't moving, the force exerted by the guy line is somehow being canceled by an equal force in the opposite direction. So what is canceling the pull of the guy line? As the guy line tries to pull the tent stake through the soil, the soil pushes back. Yes, there are complications, in part because the guy line is pulling on one end of the stake. But if the stake isn't moving, that means that all the directional forces acting on the stake add up to a directional force of zero, which also means that there's a force exerted on the stake that is equal to and opposite from the force from the guy line. And the force that negates the pull of the guy line can come from only one place, and that's the dirt. If you want dirt to push in the opposite direction from the guy line pull, there has to be enough dirt to provide the pushback. 
In this picture, the tent stake is closer to the shelter than in the previous picture. In fact, beginners often place their stakes that close to the shelter. The way the downward arrows are partly above the ground line hints at the problem. Part of where you want pushback isn't dirt, it's air. So even though the tent peg is at a 90 degree angle to the guy line, this setup is a problem. When you place the tent peg that close to the shelter, here's what's likely to happen. Because there's plenty of dirt to push back on the tent peg farther down, but not enough dirt to push back on the tent peg higher up, each wind-generated tug on the guy line is likely to rotate the tent peg to a more vertical position. As that happens, the forces acting on the tent peg develop a component of pull parallel to the tent peg. So one more tug and the tent peg slides out of the ground. This finally gets us to why I advocate a long guy line in my video. In this picture, you again see the tent peg at the recommended 90 degree angle to the guy line. Because the tent peg is farther out from the shelter, the peg can be closer to vertical while still maintaining that angle. In turn, the force needed to cancel out the pull of the guy line is more parallel to the ground surface, meaning that there's more dirt in the way of the pull on the stake. In a gusty high wind, the 90 degree angle between the guy line and stake combined with the long guy line gives you your best chance of keeping your tent peg in the ground. I'll add two last tips. First, if you're concerned that a stake could slide out of the ground, one option is to place a large rock over the stake. Any upward pull on the stake will be reduced or eliminated by the downward force of the rock. This also works best with a long guy line, since the longer line minimizes any vertical force on both the tent peg and the rock. If you try this trick right next to your tent, the wind can be strong enough to flip the rock off as it pulls the peg out of the ground. Second, if the soil is loose or you're camping on top of snow, wire tent stakes just won't work. Instead, you need to use a wide tent stake or a dead man, but that's a subject for another day. In most situations, a wire tent stake will work if you're careful how you place it.